Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back to the Faith Revival. So I've got two narrations from the Prophet, peace be upon him, today about two very special companions. And I want us to try to visualize what the Prophet is saying. There's a very important companion in our history by the name of Ammar ibn Yasir, may Allah be pleased with him, whose parents were actually the first martyrs of Islam. They were persecuted in Mecca, killed in Mecca in the very early stages of the da'wah, and Ammar had to witness that. Ammar would live a long life, and the Prophet had a particular love for this young man. So the Prophet said, Muli'a Ammar imanan ila mushashi. He said that Ammar's heart overflows with iman. It literally, if you could imagine uh, the way that the vessel is, right? That means the water is coming over the top. So subhanAllah, for some of us, faith goes in, faith comes out, faith you know, is constantly boiling in the heart, but Ammar's heart is overflowing with Iman. Now what makes that particularly interesting with Ammar anhu is that when he was being tortured along with his parents, Ammar anhu cursed the Prophet under that intense persecution. They were telling him, you know, curse the Prophet and he, he buckled to the pressure and he cursed him alayhi salatu wasalam, though he didn't want to. And he felt extremely bad about it and the Prophet ﷺ did not know about that, but he knew that Ammar was very depressed because of the way that he was carrying himself. So he went to Ammar and he said, what is it that make, that's making you so sad? He said to the Prophet ﷺ, Ya Rasulullah, I cursed you. The Prophet ﷺ said, did you curse me with your tongue or with your heart? Meaning, was this something that happened just externally or did you also mean it internally? And he said, Wallahi, O Messenger of Allah, I swear by Allah, it was just with the tongue, just to escape that persecution. And the Prophet said, Fa in adu fa'ud, if they do it to you again, then do it again. He understood that Ammar was under intense pressure. But where was the faith of Ammar? The faith of Ammar was in the regret that he felt after he did that. The faith of Ammar was in the intense love that he felt for the Messenger. And this shows us that your Iman can never be too much. It just has to be consistent. And sometimes Iman is something that's buried deep in the chest of a person, not for people to see. The other narration is about Umar ibn Khattab anhu. The Prophet says, I saw the people around me. And he said, everyone was wearing a garment. Some people had this garment and it would, you know, you can imagine the shirt, it would stop at their chest midway through. For some people it would stop at their waist, some people at their thighs, some people at their knees, and so on. He said, but then Umar anhu walked in front of me, and Umar was wearing this shirt that, that covered his entire body and was even dragging on the ground. So they said to the Prophet what did you interpret that as, O Messenger of Allah? He said, ad deen the religion, the faith of Umar anhu. SubhanAllah was like this garment, this long, dragging thobe compared to everybody else that was shown to the Prophet ﷺ in that dream. And the scholars here mention a few things. Number one, the Prophet ﷺ used to frequently see dreams about Umar, and this was alluding to his leadership, his future leadership, and establishing him in that. Number two, Umar's ability to implement Iman, to implement faith externally, was like this long garment that was so well defined compared to everyone else. So it was not necessarily just the deen itself. It was the implementation of the deen that Umar ta'ala anhu had. As in another uh, dream the Prophet had, he had Umar anhu, uh, uh, drawing from a well. Abu Bakr drew from the well before Umar, but uh, he had some weakness. Umar drew from it and uh, drew from it with much more strength and gave water to everyone around and that was not that Umar has more deen than Abu Bakr, but that his implementation, his execution at that khilafah level, he would have more uh, the ability to do more. But from a faith perspective, the way that the Prophet ﷺ sees a deen, this garment, is that it protects the body from harm. And just as it protects the body from harm in this world and the next, protects from hellfire, the garment of Iman is supposed to guard the heart. It's the implementation of Iman, the execution of Iman on the outside. And so here's an assignment for introspection for you. If you could quantify your Iman in the heart, in, you know, in the form of this, this, uh, this vessel with water and in a garment, then how would you do so? How long would your shirt have been 
in the dream of the Prophet ﷺ, meaning how well are you executing that Iman and protecting it from harm? Because that's what the garment does, it protects. Umar protected his Iman. Umar did not allow anything, even the doubtful matters, to creep into his Iman because he wanted to always keep it protected. Ammar had the overflowing heart of Iman. And if a person is able to match those two, where they have an overflowing heart of Iman, but then they protect that Iman with that garment, with the deen, then they would meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a heart full of Iman. So if you could quantify your Iman, if you could think, where does my heart fall? And what would my garment be if I was in the dream of the Prophet ﷺ that day? Then that is, that is plenty for introspection and reflection. The main question you need to ask yourself from this is how much am I doing to guard that Iman, to protect it from anything that would ruin it? And we see that in Umar anhu's case, he gained a reputation for being a man who would always distinguish between truth and falsehood and always protect his faith. May Allah allow our hearts to be filled with Iman and allow our implementation of the deen to be as profound as the implementation of Umar radiallahu anhu. Allahumma ameen. See you next time, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.